YouTube, what is going on? My name is Corporate Surf, and in today's video, I'm handing out the secret sauce to get good at Kovacs Aim Trainer. You see, I've covered some different methods, different things. This is perhaps the most important video I've posted on any of these topics. So we have a prompt here on this first screen. What do we do when we're ready to start to specialize on one scenario in Kovacs? So the definition for specialize here is to concentrate and become an expert in a particular subject or skill. So how do we specialize? How do we grind a scenario in Kovacs? Now on screen here, it says tracking, but this is applicable in other areas. I'm just specifically relating it to tracking for this video, but there's many parallels. Okay, so that's an interesting hook, but who should really try this? Well, that's gonna be players who want to push a scenario multiple ranks at a time. If you're playing Voltaic, you have a scenario you like or a scenario you need to get better to get to a rank, this video is going to be for you. A word of caution, however, I'm going to go ahead and personally recommend that you do this at Diamond Complete. But anyone can do this. So if you're watching this at Platinum Complete, Gold Complete, this is still okay for you guys to do. If you're not Platinum Complete, if you're not Gold Complete, I would worry about the fundamentals more than watching this video. But this is still a good video to watch for later once you do hit those goals. Okay, so that was a lot of setup. What's the big idea here? Well, on screen we have tracking training theory. So this is not technique theory. This is just the methodology behind how you can train and push a scenario. The way I've divided it here is into two subcategories, both smoothness and precision. So let's look at smoothness first here. Of course, a lot of this is gonna be an oversimplification, but I think this paints the picture into what exactly helps when we are tracking our training for smoothness. Immediately, what has to happen is that you start with a bigger target. When you're training smoothness and you are working on a scenario, you have to have a big slow target. That's the first thing, first priority, training smoothness in my book. Next thing, number two here, a big target at normal speed. Then logically here, the next one we haven't mentioned would be a big target at a faster speed. All right, so looking at the other side of the coin here, precision course we're going to have a small target. Our first priority with this small target is going to be tracking at a normal speed. Then next we have tracking with a fast and small target. And then finally tracking with a small slow target. As you can see, number three and number six here, big target with a fast speed and a small slow target. These two kind of bridge the gap between smoothness and precision. They both exist within their own right and their respective benefit to the group they're training, but there are parallels to each side with these two. Okay, let's go ahead and actually give an example then with this format. Here we have intermediate for snake track. And as you can see, the scenarios fit in here perfectly. I'm going to go into more depth on what each of these are. And I made a whole playlist of these, but we're just going to cover these briefly. For smoothness, we have snake track novice, snake track intermediate level two. So that's 25% bigger for a regular speed snake track, snake track advanced level one. So that's 50% bigger on the advanced snake track. Then for precision with our small target training, we have snake track intermediate level four. So that's 30% smaller on the snake track. Snake track advanced level three, that's 10% smaller on the faster version, which is advanced. And then snake track intermediate slow-mo, which is an extremely slow version, but an extremely small version of snake track intermediate. Okay, so we have that chart of scenarios, but how exactly do we put this method together? Step number one, we're gonna scout a sensitivity. So when you go to snake track intermediate, Go and examine the scores in the top 25 and predict what your preferred sensitivity will be. For example, you may look in the top 25, see a bunch of scores like 50, 52, 60, 64, 58, and you settle on something like 54 because you think that'll work for you. So once you understand that value, we're going to also note a value at 10 centimeter 360 slower. So following the same example, this number would now be 64 centimeter 360 for your snake track. Part two, and I don't think a lot of you guys are going to like this, but it's really important. We're going to benchmark for one whole hour at the newly chosen slow sensitivity. This would be that 64 centimeter 360 that we were just talking about. If you don't get a new personal best score, which if you don't, that's fine. Write down your session best. So now that we have an understanding of what our best score is at this slow sensitivity, we're going to begin our training process and this is going to occur at 3.5 centimeter 360 faster so for example we did that benchmarking session at 64 now we're starting our training at 60.5 cm 360. 
So we're going to be training our six scenarios that we talked about in that like bubble flow chart thing. We're going to be training those at this new value. And again, I know a lot of you guys aren't going to like this. We're playing each scenario one hour at a time. So I'm going to give you a whole schedule one week. And I can all but guarantee you that if you follow this pattern, if you follow the instructions of this video, you guys will see tremendous gains. Each day here, I'm proposing an hour and 15 minutes of play. First of all, if you can't play Kovacs for an hour and 15 minutes at a time, you don't like Kovacs. That's fine if you don't like Kovacs, but I don't think this channel is for you. Play these for an hour and 15 minutes at a time. When you're done, you can play other categories too. You'll see people on Reddit and other places say, oh, never play a name trainer more than 30 minutes at a time. All this BS. If you're worried about injury, do stretches. Take breaks. But don't just limit yourself from playing the game. If you know what it takes to get better and you choose not to, you are choosing to lose. You are choosing not to get better. Stop doing that. If you like the game, play the game. So, day one here. We're doing our benchmark. You can see in the red, 64 CM360. That's my example. Yours doesn't have to be that. We're playing one hour of Snake Track Intermediate. Okay, look in the red here on the next one, 60.5 CM360. This starts your training at 3.5 centimeter 360 faster. So here we have a VDIM scenario. It's smooth your wrist, truly fixed. That comes from IO, who is the leader of TSK. Great scenario for your smoothness. It's gonna help with snake track. That's why we're playing these VDIM playlists too. We're gonna do that one for 15 minutes. I will say as well, before we get into day two here, this is not just gonna be a PowerPoint presentation. I'm actually gonna get into the COVAX and show you each of these scenarios just so that you can see them. Okay, day two, we're working at 60.5 CM360. For this example, this is a smoothness day for the main activity. We're playing an hour of snake track novice. You might say, oh, I've, I, yeah, I've already played novice. You know, I'm gold, I'm gold on novice. It doesn't matter, play the scenario. For our VDIM scenario, we got centering two, 180. This is the intermediate version, which is made by 4RK. Shout out to 4RK. He has a ton of great scenarios for snake track, tracking, and Voltaic Season 5 as a whole. Next day, day 3, we're playing Snake Track Intermediate Level 4. This is a precision day. This is the one that I was telling you guys is 30% smaller. Then we're also doing at any CM360 you want, Wide Angle Tracking Intermediate. Next day, day 4, Snake Track Intermediate Level 2. Back on Smoothness. Then we're also playing TAM Target Switch. We're playing the Smooth Version Intermediate 15 minutes. You can play this one at any CM360. There's also a Control Version you guys can play that if you want, but this smooth one is for the playlist here. Day number five, we have Snake Track Advanced Level 3. This is going to be huge for your precision. This is the one that's faster and it's 10% smaller than the regular version of the advanced version. For our VDIM scenario here, we have Smooth Sphere Diamond. You can play this one at any CM360. And I think this should go without saying, when I'm talking about smoothness and precision days, the, the VDIM scenario that's with it, it's not corresponding. This is just following the list of supplementary tasks that are going to help you with snake track in general. We're playing an hour of this snake track advanced level 3. That's why I'm calling it a precision day. Okay, day number 6, we've got snake track advanced level 1. That's 50% bigger for the faster advanced version. And then for our VDIM scenario, we're doing smooth bot power glider intermediate for 15 minutes. Yes, that is a 7 on your screen. Don't question it. We have a precision day here with snake track intermediate slow-mo. Then I think you should play at the same sensitivity for Snake Track Intermediate Reactive. This will be a challenge for you if you play at the slow sensitivity, but don't worry, the benefits are there. I will say as well, and you'll see this when we get into the Kovacs gameplay, for me, this scenario is broken, Snake Track Intermediate Reactive. It's not broken in the sense that you can't play it. You definitely can. The scores just don't post online, and I don't know why. I still seriously recommend this one. Okay, start of week two, the playlist has looped. This is the last slide I'm going to show you, but I want to explain this really quickly. Now that you practice all week on 60.5 CM360, for our example, of course, now we're benchmarking Snake Track Intermediate again at that value 60.5. When you are done with your benchmarking session, we're now moving on to 57 CM360 for our first VDIM scenario, and we're beginning our training at this new value. So now we're going to come back to the slide, if you'll remember. You might have said to yourself, what's the significance of going in these 3.5 centimeter 360 increments? The reason is we are systematically and incrementally increasing our sensitivity to adjust to this scenario. After three incremental changes, 
you're going to be at the value of your predicted optimal setting. So like for this example here with snake track, when we said 54, we thought that was going to be our optimal. We're actually going to be working at 53.5. The point is we have given ourselves a chance to systematically and gradually ease into an optimal sensitivity. So with that all being said, we're going to actually go ahead and jump into the COVAX scenarios to let you guys see them. But this is the method. This is how I train snake track myself. This is how I train all of my training. doesn't matter if it's control or reactive. This is what I do. I went from platinum rank all the way to celestial rank for precise in one year. So if you give yourself patience, you give this an honest try. I'm not going to say that you're going to turn out to be as good as I am at this one specific category, but you're giving yourself the chance to improve. Okay, that's enough yapping. Let's go into the Kovacs. Okay, starting off here with the first scenario on our playlist and the first scenario for day one. It's our benchmark VT Snake Track Intermediate Season 5. As you can see, I'm number 2 out of 8,000 on this. This bot has a bunch of challenging long strafes and it may discourage you from using that slow CM360, but trust me, you will get used to it. It'll help you practice your resets. It's overall very good. I think if you give it an hour, there's a chance you beat your personal best score just without any other training. Then for our first VDIM scenario, we have Smooth Your Wrist, Truly Fixed. This one is an interesting scenario because it's only 45 seconds. There's also those two planes of glass that you can't shoot through. But this one is great for your horizontal smoothness. Okay, day two smoothness, we have Snake Track Novice. There's not too much to say about this one. Just rest assured that practicing this one is beneficial even if you've already played it a bunch. For VDIM Day 2, we have Centering 2180 Intermediate Version. For this, I really recommend making your crosshair smaller so you can see where it sits within the bot. Even though this is a smoothness day, this will definitely help you with your precision. Next up, we have Snake Track Intermediate Level 4. This is 30% smaller, and that applies both to the radius, which is the width, and the height. Even though it's the same speed as our benchmark, the small size makes it feel a little bit faster. I find this one is a very challenging step up and it's really great for our precision training. For our next VDIM scenario, we have VT Wide Angle Tracking Intermediate. This is one that I have not played a bunch, so this was really fun. I found it really forced me to fix my form and work on the way that I track these weird angles. Definitely recommend this one a bunch. Next up, we have another smoothness scenario. This time it's Intermediate Level 2, which means its height and radius are 25% bigger. These level 2 scenarios are a really good way to gauge your potential for the scenario that you're playing. In my time playing these shimmy level variants, I found that my initial scores for level 2, I will eventually get to and beyond on the actual benchmark that I'm playing. Next up, we have another VDIM scenario, which is TAM Target Switch Smooth Intermediate. This one is really fun and really challenging. The bots have regenerating health if you don't keep your crosshair on the bot. This one really forces good technique. And if you have any background in switching, it will be even more fun for you. Next up, we have another precise task in Snake Track Advanced Level 3. This one is 10% smaller in the height and the radius. This is another one I recommend having a smaller crosshair for. It feels super fast, so you'll have to work to keep up and be precise. For our next VDIM task here, we have Smooth Sphere Diamond. There are a ton of Smooth Sphere variants that I recommend you guys checking out. But this diamond one here is really good for your smoothness. It's great for your snake track because the direction changes are extremely similar. You'll also notice you have to work on how well you reset. Next up we have another smoothness scenario in snake track advanced level 1. This one is 50% bigger in both the height and the width. I absolutely love this scenario. It makes me feel like I'm so good at snake track. If you keep your small crosshair, it's so funny to see how absolutely massive the bot feels. But yeah, this is another great one for your smoothness. Next up here we have SmoothBot Power Glider Intermediate. This is an insanely hard scenario because of the way it utilizes a vertical pattern. It travels in diagonals, hitting both the bottom of the map and the roof. This is a great one for working on your precision. Alright, last but not least here for our Snake Track variants, we have Intermediate Slow-Mo. I make these slow-mo variants for all kinds of scenarios. These are always getting a 40% reduction to the time scale, which makes all of the movement properties slower. It also gets a 40% reduction to the bot speed. 
and with all of those speed changes, it also gets a 60% reduction in its overall size. This is the tech for ultimate precision training here with Snake Track, in my opinion. And then finally, here we have the leaderboard breaking scenario VT Snake Track Intermediate Reactive Focus. This one is just a really great scenario. It really helps you with the hardest part of tracking in Snake Track, which is when the bot gets really fast on long strafes. The bot will come to a slowdown and just take off. And so this is a great one to practice. I really have to give 4RK a ton of props for coming up with a scenario like this. This is insanely helpful and I think it makes a huge difference for the people that are willing to take the time and practice it. As you can see here as the scenario has ended, my leaderboard isn't loading, my score is not uploading, so you won't find my score on here. But I actually got a score that was worthy of second place after two runs, so I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, these are the scenarios for the playlist that we went over. I have the playlist here on screen for you guys to see. I will also have the share code in the description and the pinned comment. This has been a super long video with a lot of details, so I hope you guys have made it here to the end. If you have, thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. But that is going to wrap up this video. Thank you all again for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.